how are you doing africans i hope you are doing fine where you are and um, if you're not doing fine as always please do fine where you are it's not good to be fine it's not good not to be fine but it's good to be fine in the pursuit of knowledge uh, that is what we do in this channel it's good to be fine and if you are not fine find a way to be fine yeah please now let's talk about um something that has always baffled the minds of so many as as you know humans uh humans uh, we tend to be some of us tend to be so um empirical some of us tend to be so uh, rational we have rationality and we have empiricism now rationalism is uh the target is the truth that is what the target is now we only have two roots that we can use to take us to the truth we have empiricism and then we have rationalism rationalism is um is a way of um reaching the target by using reason just reasoning but uh empiricism is using evidence using experience to reach a certain point which is the truth now empiricism uses uses experience and uh, rationalism uses reason but there's a way you can bypass uh to reach truth without having empiricism there is a way even without using rationalism here is where you use thinking thinking you can use to bypass um an idea that had to be experienced for you to reach the truth and one of these things is um say for instance uh somebody told you that don't go through that road um you will fall and you can clearly see their leg is broken because they followed that road and they fell so you you don't want to follow that road and fall okay so you're just thinking ah if i follow that road i will fall and so you want to be doing that you will have reached the truth which is not falling and then it's because you've not gone through that road now this is likened to something that has always baffled the minds of so many africans the minds of so many of us um who are trying to uh, learn the truth of our originality we have many theories that have come outside a uh, theory is trying to explain who what is the origin of mankind we have the creation theory we have the evolution theory uh, we have the mythical theories from uh, traditions each tradition has their own mythical theories and now i believe i personally believe that god is the creator of heaven and earth and god is the creator of humans uh, the whole history of um creation of man and everything we see around us has been documented uh, in a book called genesis this genesis was written by um Moses Most Americans don't know that humans were actually created by ancient extraterrestrials long ago an advanced civilization from the planet Nibiru discovered Earth they were traveling in hopes of finding more materials for their home planet at the time Earth was not home to any intelligent life they used their advanced technology to combine the DNA of their species with the DNA of the Homo erectus and with this they created the first humans This is how Jesus was born from a virgin mother. The human race was created to be turned into slaves for the Anunnaki. We would harvest the earth's materials for them. This is why there are massive pyramids on almost every continent. When they were filled up with precious metals and the pyramids were activated, it would send a signal up into the cosmos to alert the Anunnaki that they needed to return and collect what was farmed. This theory comes from ancient Sumerian texts, the first ever recorded texts from human beings. This is why many ancient cultures have art that depicts extraterrestrial gods. And this is why Where is it from? Sudan. Then who you live with here? Hmm? Who you live with here? Masaya. Yourself? So you alone come came to, Sud- to uh, Africa? The whole reach here. Uh, I came my parents. No where is your mom and dad? No, my dad. Where is your dad? Sh- Chicago. Eh? Chicago. You do what? Chicago. Chicago. These two girls are a perfect example of why race is a social construct. Hear me out. Lucy and Maria are sisters. In fact, they're fraternal twin sisters. But many people would look at them and think they're not related. In fact, you probably think that Lucy identifies as white, and Maria identifies as black. But this is their mom, who we probably would say is racially black. But because these two girls could self-identify differently, they'd be treated differently by the US healthcare system. For Maria, US racial corrections would say she had different lung, kidney, and heart functioning than her sister. 
That means compared to her twin sister, Maria is less likely to have a lung transplant, less likely to have a kidney transplant, and less likely to have a heart transplant just because of her race. The problem is, even though these two sisters aren't any genetically different than any other pair of siblings, they'd be treated differently by the medical system. And that makes no sense. So your question is why did only black people go through racism after the abolition of slavery? Where do I begin? To start off, race was socially constructed in the 17th century to separate people based on physical features and to imply some races were more intelligent and more superior than other races. And the only reason race was constructed was to support the transatlantic slave trade. So if we go deep into the etymology of race, what we are defining is a severe hatred. And if we look at it that way, black people are not the only ones to experience hatred, discrimination, suppression because of their physical features. The North Africans who enslaved one million Europeans were surely racist towards them. And the Romans who enslaved the British were surely racist towards them assuming that race is another form of hatred because race did not even exist back then. And all of this is to justify the inhumanity of slavery and the profits that it generated for the wealthiest classes. But now, what's strange is that how white people have come outside. This is the strange part because the Bible is no racism. The strange part is how whites have come outside and they have decided we are going to write the Bible or rather we are going to interpret the Bible to our own liking. This is how it's done. You see, God created uh, the first human beings. You understand everything stems from something. And the first human was Adam. Adam gave birth to Seth and uh, Cain. Seth and Cain married their sisters, came out uh, another generation after that, after that, after that, after that, until we reach the time of Noah. And the time of Noah is when we see the great flood, the great, great flood. Now, this great flood sweeps everyone all over the world except Noah and his family and some of those animals which uh, were able to get into the ark. I believe so many of us uh, know this story. Now, from Noah, he had three sons who, whom he was with in this um, ark. These three sons were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The white person has been able to come outside and tell us that in these three uh, sons of uh, Noah is where we had the races, the major three races. The other day I did a video about um, white people and the Caucasus Mountains. This is just a follow-up video. Now, from this Shem, Ham, and Japheth, uh, who? Noah cast some of his sons. He cast two of them. He said one will be a servant to the other. The one who will be a servant to the other is the African. And the, black, the white person has been able to say that God is the one who placed caste on Africans. He is saying that Africans were black because we are caste. I don't think God is such a God. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't think he's like that. Now, I don't want to say much. I want us to listen to a case such as this. How did the nations of the world derive from Noah's three sons? Well, first things first, this was a different kind of people got off that boat than the people that we call people now. What, evolution? No, we have devolved, bruh. These were prime specimens. We are weak and pitiful. These fellas right here live to be much longer than 120 years old. You see, that pre-flood world was far different than the one we live in now. First of all, the land was all one giant mass. I don't know why they can't just go ahead and put all the rest of this together. The flood is what broke up Pangea. The fountains of the deep bursting open. These are called the trenches today, and they're all still there in the ocean floor. And I don't know about a water canopy, but I do know that before the flood, no rain fell upon the earth, and all the plants got watered from a mist that rose up from the ground. We know it was much more like a greenhouse than it is now. And the air was absolutely saturated with oxygen, which is why animals used to grow so large in the past, and men could live upwards of a thousand years. Imagine running and not getting tired. Your muscles don't burn. That's an oxygen-rich environment. Not to be sure, before the flood, angels did pervert the bloodlines of both animals and people. Noah's three sons were clean all the way back to Adam, but Ham's wife was not. Well, why did God let her on the boat at all then? Well, if you remember the story, God let the clean animals on seven by seven, but he also let the unclean animals on two by two. And since that time, Jesus Christ has cleansed all flesh on the cross. So don't worry about ancestry in 2024. But for the purpose of our story, that's why God let the unclean on the boat. 
His plan is to save them too if they are a part of creation here. Don't y'all know God is merciful? Anyway, these three prime specimens of a human got off the boat. With their wives and they had kids. Lots of them. How, why? Because they lived for hundreds of years. Look, Shem was still alive when Abraham came out of Babylon into the land of Canaan. The Epic of Gilgamesh is a story about Nimrod going back to get the story of the flood from Noah, who the Babylonians called Ud Udnapishtim or something like that. Anyway, Noah and these fellas were alive for a long time after the flood. And they're pretty genetically pure. They're only the eighth specimen from Adam. So Shem and his wife had a bunch of kids, Japheth and his wife had a bunch of kids, and Ham and his wife had a bunch of kids. Well, who did their children marry? Each other. And I'm sorry to tell you if you don't know, but interfamilial relationships weren't banned until 1400 BC and only to the third cousin. Why did they keep marriage in the family, so to speak? Well, it's, it got everything to do with religion. Shem had a religion he received directly from Noah by blessing and all. Japheth got blessed to dwell in the tents of Shem, meaning don't worry about it, he'll teach you. And Ham, having married a pagan foreign woman, followed her religion. Sound familiar? Solomon? So all through the Bible, the men of God would go back to marry from their family so that they knew what these people believed. They shared the culture and customs and religion. And marrying a foreign wife was the surest way to lose your culture, custom, and religion. So by Abraham's time, they were marrying their cousins, not their sisters. And by Moses' time, God was like, stop marrying your cousins unless they're a third or more. The gene pool's getting a bit muddy. Copy of a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. Now, once you get off the boat and a few generations down the line into the future, the people are spreading out more and more because of resources. Some of them are nomadic. Some of them settle down. Some of them build empires. Well, they got too big for their britches and started building the Tower of Babel to reach into heaven. The rumor has it it was to make war on God for flooding the earth and destroying the civilization. We got to start all over from the dirt. What do you mean, God? That's the story in another book. Maybe they were trying to get angels to fall down to earth like they did before the flood to teach them all this stuff again. Like they still had a bunch of it that was handed down from Shem, Ham, and Japheth who lived in that world before the flood. But they wanted to be God. So they built that Tower of Babel. God was like, nah. Confused their languages, which still holds true in the record. None of the root languages have anything to do with one another. It's a complete mystery. And this all happened according to bloodline, so you can imagine the consternation. All of a sudden, you can't understand your neighbors. Y'all can't work together or live together anymore. And so the spread now happened a little more. Japheth's people were the first to go up into the far-flung places in the isles. The aboriginals in every place are descended from Japheth. Now, not all natives are aboriginal, okay? Some of the natives became native after that happened. Might have been the first ones in the land that they came to inhabit, but they came later than when Japheth's people spread out first. Ham's people stuck around, became Sumer, Babylon, Egypt. Shem's people hung around the northern part of the Levant and Canaan. But that's not the end of the story. We're talking about empires that grew from the Levant, from the Mediterranean, to encompass what? Well, eventually, the whole world. Now, flash forward to 1400 BC, even then God commands the people not to marry pagan wives. But they didn't listen, okay? And so in 1400 BC, you got the situation where you got empires around the Mediterranean, Babylon and Egypt and all that. In the north, you've got like the Hittites, the Luanians, the Anatolians, Mycenaeans, all that up there. Empires. The Mediterranean is a huge port of trade all around. Silk Road to China is right there. It goes all the way to the northern tip of Israel where it accesses the Mediterranean. People mixed up, man. Through conquest and taking wives and taking slaves. Through trade and through treaty. Like, there's a whole study published now about how the incels of any society become its army. And historically, with the promise of, you guys want wives? Let's go get them. That's how they did that for a while there. How many American soldiers come back from foreign war with a foreign wife? I mean, this is just kind of... Part of that process of a war, I think. So after the Tower of Babel, people spread out. People start fighting, coming into conflict, wars, empires, conquering going on, right? The Hebrews come out in mass, in number, from slavery in Egypt into the Levant, into the land of Canaan. At this point, you got your empires around the area. They're a bit mixed up now, a little bit. Japheth's people who spread out have established themselves wherever they settled and continued to settle. 
But then something crazy happened. It's called the Bronze Age Collapse, where all those empires around the northern part of the Mediterranean collapsed, Turkey and all that. And it was an invading sea peoples who collapsed them, along with calamity and earthquake and famine and all this. But the sea peoples burning entire civilizations to the ground caused mass migrations. People to lose who they even were. And the sea peoples are an enigma in history. Who even are they? Speculation. Now it's real clear. The tribe of Dan conquered Laish on the end of the Silk Road to China. The tribe of Asher conquered the coast of the Mediterranean. Not entirely, they also mixed in with Tyr and Sidon, those people who they couldn't conquer. And together, they all got in some new fancy boats, Dan's, ships, that had better rigging than the Phoenicians. Phoenicia is a word that came much later than 1400 BC. They weren't called Phoenicians back then, I promise. With that new boat, they could sail further and get richer, and with that money, they could make more conquest and do more colonization of the world for trade. So almost everyone in the known world got conquered by the beast from the sea. So much so that the word Din or Dan means the mouth of a river, because that's where the sea peoples would appear when they were invading. They'd come up the river. Just like the Vikings, who claim in their own mythology to be descended from mythical King Dan, there's only one of them fellas in history. Jacob's son. Isaac's son. Saxon? Isaac's son. Yeah. Isaac's son. Yes. Saxons. Anglo-Saxons. Anglo is Asher. How do you get Anglo from Asher? The phonetics got messed up at the Tower of Babel. You're going to learn in a study of etymology and phonetics that some sounds equal other sounds from other cultures because they couldn't make that sound. They use a different one to replace it. This is how alphabets get evolved. Anyway, this sort of invasion thing happened in waves. It just didn't, it didn't just happen once. Different groups headed out from the Mediterranean. They were the same people, just different groups of the same people at different times. And conquered the lands that they came to from the Mediterranean up and around the European coast. Not just once, a different group, same people would come later and conquer themselves, who had gotten there first. The funniest part about the Danes invading England is that they're cousins. But the Anglo-Saxons invading the Britons, they're cousins. They're all from Phoenicia at different times. So when we're talking about like Native Americans, some came over real early, Japheth's people. Some came over after that Bronze Age collapse. The Cherokee are Arabic. The Hopi are Egyptian. The land masses were not always as spread out from one another as they are now. They have spread to this point. And they're so spread out now because every time there's an end of the age, there's a cataclysm. We're in the fourth age now, so there's been three major cataclysms. Each time there's a cataclysm at the end of the age, hell increases her borders and the land spreads out a little more. Because what's under our feet got bigger, like a balloon blowing up. Anyway, I'll just cut to the chase. The tribe of Dan colonized the whole world, mixed in with everybody. The people in every place now are not the people that were there. And before people came, nobody was there. The nations are all mixed up into a multitude from every nation, creed, and tongue by the end of this age. Anyway, I've talked a lot about this. I wanted to hit a couple of different angles in this video. I hope I answered your question, though. We're all at least 56 cousins, so it don't really matter, fam. Wow, wow, wow. This has been so much uh, astounding. This is a, a very, very powerful revelation. Back in my mind, I always knew that... Um, there is something about everyone in this world. There is something about black people. There is something about cultures. There is something about everyone. I always known that. Because we have extreme evil. We have extreme kindness. Like we have polarities on this universe. The racism that black people are facing all over the world. The, the, all that thing that... All that misbehavior, all those misconducts, there has always been a reason to all this. Because sometimes back, um, I got a lot of comments, a lot of uh, email. People were telling me we are the Hebrew Israelites. They were even providing me with evidence that here is the evidence. Look at this. We are the lost tribe of Israel. We are this and that. It's true humans, we are stemming out from a certain um, we are stemming out from a certain ancestry. We are stemming out from a certain uh, culture, people, and all that. And the idea that we are all coming, f we are all sharing the same grandfather, we are all sharing the same uh, ancestor, should be something that everyone should settle with. And 
all these issues of racism, all these issues, you are better than me, I'm better than you, should end. Because I believe in the end we didn't have black or white people. We had our own forefathers. And these forefathers had their own skin tone. They had the skin tone of people of their own times. Just like I get a lot of comments, Jesus is black, Jesus is black. I'm not certain Jesus is black. I'm not going to speak about that. Jesus, I can say this, the most high Jesus Christ was not black and he was not white. Jesus Christ was like the people of his times, the people of the Middle East, the people he looked like somewhere, somehow like an Arab. The people of the Middle East have distinctive looks. If you look at a, pe a person from Israel and you look at a person from America or Europe or Africa, you can clearly tell this person is different. They have a certain kind of hair. You understand? So Middle East, Middle East is the point in the world that touches the whole world. It's like the central point of the world that is bordering the rest of the world. And you can see, according to uh, the white gentleman, he, he was able to tell us that there's a time when we had one landmass, and this landmass was called Pangea, and it was surrounded by water until came the floods. The floods uh, was a causality to cause the continental drifts. Continental drift is when the plate, the plate is the huge landmass we are stepping on right now. This is the continental plate. Now, a drift occurred when we had uh, the Noah's flood. It was a serious flood. It was a very, very serious flood. Noah's flood was a very serious one. God had to make sure that everything was wiped out. And that is what he did during the floods. A flood that kills a giant is not an easy flood. It has to be a serious one. So this explains why we have different parts of uh, cultures. We have black people in Australia. We have black people in... Some black people are found in Malay archipelago, in those small, small islands of the Malay. We also have some black people along the small, small island of the Pacific. The Pacific Islands has some native black people. How did they, these native black people get there? It explains that we were once one people. That is who we are, who we were and who we are still. The only thing that we came to have is a black skin as Africans because of the light. We had to develop this black skin to help us uh, do away, to help us, uh, it, it was like a protective uh, mechanism against the UV light. So this protective mechanism was to ensure that we are not having skin diseases, a skin cancer, and this was made sure by higher amounts of melanin. So if you have higher amount of melanin, you become black. So black is just as a result of higher amounts of melanin which is something reasonable. You shouldn't judge somebody, why are you black? You should ask them, ha, ah, I admire your melanin. So you, your forefathers had to have this nini to make them survive. Next time you see a black person, admire the art that God put in them. Yeah. I don't have much to say or add to, into this video. I'll just have to end it here. If you have uh, anything to add on this video, kindly uh, subscribe, uh, comment on the video. Yeah. I'm a little hungry. I'll have to go and eat and do for you a next video. See you in the next one. Super thanks. Subscribe. I'll so much appreciate. 